Amigos, welcome to another After Effects tutorial. This is CM De La Vega, and today we'll be creating an elegant panel slideshow. Remember that life is truly a gift, make it count. Shout out to my fellow Nika and amigo Alexis Quaresma. Follow him here on IG. He was kind enough to allow me to use his work for this tutorial. Check out his website. He does a lot of photography for high-end clients and athletes, as you can see. He also shares a ton of information, knowledge on photography, on lighting. Definitely, you'll want to follow him. Go to Alexis Quaresma on IG, and let's get started with this tutorial. Let's go to new composition and let's call this new comp panel and we'll be using this preset and make it 10 seconds long. Hit OK and let's go to the rectangle tool. Click on it and double click to make it the size of the comp. And for the fill, you can give it any color. It doesn't really matter because we'll be using it as a map. Now for the stroke, make sure that the stroke is set to none. Let's go down to our timeline. Let's rename it to box. And let's go to rectangle one, drill down to the path. Let's go to the size and let's make it 480 by 1080. And down in the transform rectangle, let's go to the skew and let's make it 10 to skew it. And what we'll do is we'll animate this. Make sure that the CTI is at zero. Let's go to the rectangle path and we'll animate the position. Click on the stopwatch to add the first keyframe. Let's go forward to frame 15. Let's add another keyframe. And now let's go back to the first one and we'll adjust the Y value. Let's move it all the way down to 1100 and let's check it out. Pretty simple. What we can do is we can select the keyframes F9 for easy ease. It's a little better, but what we can do is jump into the graph editor and also like only the position. Make sure that we are in the speed graph and select this keyframe and let's drag this handle so we can get a pretty fast start, then it'll slow down. So let's check it out. Much better. Okay, now let's go to the box. For now, let's hide it and let's deselect by clicking outside. And what we'll do is let's go to the info panel and hit control R, command R to bring up the rulers and let's create a guide. Let's create a guide at 960. And let's go up to the pen tool, click and hold. And what we'll do is create a line, click and click. And let's go to the convert vertex tool. Make sure that this is linear and go to the selection tool, go to view. And we want to make sure that we have snap to guides turned on. And now let's snap it to the guide. Perfect. And for this line, what we want is the fill is set to none. And the stroke, let's give it a value of 14. And you can give it any color. What I'll do is the initial color will be white for the first line. And let's rename it line. And let's animate this line. Drill down, go to contents, go to shape. And what we'll do is we'll add a trim path. Go to trim path and let's drill down and we'll animate the start and the end properties. We'll begin with the end. Click on the stopwatch and let's make it zero. And let's move forward to frame 10. Let's make this 100. And this is what we have so far. Now let's animate this off. So starting at frame six, go to the star property, click on the stopwatch and let's move forward to frame 16 and let's make this 100. And this way we can animate it off. Let's check it out. And we'll grab the keyframes. We'll add easy ease. And we'll jump into the valley graph, go to the valley graph. And we'll select the start and the end. And what we'll do, amigos, is select the first keyframe and let's move this handle. And this will give it some hang time at the beginning. And let's give it some hang time at the end as well. And let's check it out. Perfect. This is better. And now let's go down to transform shape. 
And let's go to skew and let's skew it 10. And let's go to the box and let's go to the line, hit P for position and let's move it. We'll move it right here at 12, 12, 15. And this first line, let's make it, let's make it start at frame eight. So let's move this layer. And this is what we have so far. And let's make a copy, control D, command D to make a copy. And this copy will start at frame 15. And what we'll do is we'll change the color and we'll make it one pixel thicker. Let's check it out. Let's see what we have. Perfect. Now let's import our image. What I'll do is let's import this picture. And again, this is Mario Barrios. He is professional boxer. And obviously Mario is fighting for the championship in June. So check out that fight as well. We'll bring this picture into the timeline. And what we'll do is using the box, we'll use it as a mat. So let's go to the image and using track mat, go to alpha mat and hit S for scale. Let's scale this down. Let's make it 50% and let's move it down. Now let's create a animation for the image. So before we do, this is what we have. This is looking pretty good, but we can also animate the image. Instead of animating the scale of the image, let's create a null object. Go to layer, new, null object. Put it all the way on the top and let's rename it to scale. Hit S for scale. Let's move the CTI to the beginning Click on the stopwatch for the first keyframe, make it 50%. And what we'll do is we'll go to frame 10 and let's make this 100% and select the keyframes and add easy ease. And now let's go to the image and using parent and link, let's parent it to the scale and let's check it out. Now, the reason that we created a null object and we animated the null object is so we can always adjust. We can always adjust the scale of the original image, but we won't lose that little scale animation that we created. So this gives us more flexibility. And when we swap with different images, this will come in handy. We'll keep it at 55. And we'll move it a little over and let's check it out. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create the name and we'll go down to the comp icon and we'll call it name. And again, we'll use this preset and make it 10 seconds long. Hit OK. And let's go up to the rectangle tool. Let's double click and let's make the stroke none. And for the fill, let's give it a black color. And let's go down and let's rename it to box. Let's go to rectangle, drill down to the path and to the size. Let's make it 500 by 100. And hit Y for the pan behind tool and make sure that you have snapping turned on. And let's move this anchor point right here to the corner. And now hit S for scale and let's animate the scale. So let's make sure that the CTI is at the beginning and let's unlink it and let's adjust this. Let's make this zero and add a keyframe and let's go forward to frame 10 and let's make it 100%. And let's check it out and we can add some easy ease F9 for easy ease. Now let's go to the text tool and we'll type in the text that will go inside the box. Let's type it in and we'll type in Barrios. This is Mario Barrios. And I'll be using the DIN Next LT Pro font. This is one of my favorite fonts to use and we'll make it bold for this one. And we'll switch, we'll swap the fill and the stroke. So it'll only have a stroke and let's see, we can give it a stroke of, let's give it four pixels. 
Now let's go to the align panel and we'll put it right in the center. And let's animate this text. Go down and we'll go to the per character animator and let's select the position and let's add the scale and the initial position for the Y value. Let's make it 50 and the initial scale. Let's make it zero and let's move the CTI to the beginning and let's go to the range selector. And what we'll do is we'll animate the start property. Click on the stopwatch and let's move forward to frame 20 and let's make this 100 percent. Let's check it out. OK, it needs some work. So what we'll do is we'll go to advanced and where it says based on. Let's switch it to words. Let's check it out a little better. And now let's go to ease low and let's make it 100 percent. Let's check it out much better. It's a nice, smoother animation. And what we'll do now is go to the box. Let's make a copy. Control D, Command D to make a copy. Let's place it above the text and let's call this matte. And I'll color code these two. And let's go to the text and using track matte, choose alpha matte. Now let's check it out. So this text will be inside the box. And we can always go to the text and we can go to the position and maybe change it to 75 for the Y. That looks a little better. Perfect. And let's add the first name. Let's go back to the text tool and let's type in the first name. I'm going to type in Mario. And let's move this above the mat and we'll make it regular and let's swap this so we only have a fill and no stroke and let's align it right in the middle. Let's place it here and let's animate the text. Hit P for position and what we'll do is right click, go to separate dimensions and we'll animate the Y position. Let's move the CTI to frame eight and we'll start here. What we'll do is click on the Y position, click on the stopwatch to add the first keyframe and let's go forward to frame 23. And let's add a keyframe. Let's go to the first one and then we'll move it down right here and let's move this text beneath the box so we can hide it and let's check it out and select the keyframes F9 for easy ease. And what we can do is let's jump into the valley graph and let's select this first keyframe and let's give it a fast start. Perfect. Now let's go back to the panel and what we can do amigos is bring in the name composition. We can move it. Let's check it out it down and you can place it wherever you want. But this is the basics of creating this panel effect. Once you have one, you can simply make copies and quickly make adjustments and put in new pictures and change the name, change the colors. But this is how you can set it up. Hopefully this gives you a lot of insight into how to create this very simple but yet elegant looking panel slideshow.